welcome to our sixth episode of the Commented Out podcast. I am one of your hosts, Max. I am another one of your hosts, Addy. And I am super excited to be another host. I'm Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it's, it, you made it sound like you're, you're like, it's like your first episode here. <laughs> I'm super excited to be your third host. Yeah, it's your, your first time here. <laughs> your first time here. Um, yeah, so um, today we're trying out something new. So as we said, you know, we're just like figuring things out. So um, we're going completely off dialogue. So we have nothing planned. We're just kind of kind of improvising as we go. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, t- try and try new things out here. I'm sure we'll um, have plenty to talk about because sure. school is pretty busy <laughs> right now. <laughs> we go on such long tangents, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of random stuff. So I think we're fine. I think we're fine even without uh, topics to, to uh, like plan. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, one one thing that's new with us right now um, is that we're all participating in a game jam. Um, so Max and I mm, are in, yes we are uh, a part of a game jam. Uh, a horror game jam, um, and uh, Veronica and uh, Forrest, who was our, our special guest uh, last episode, are in uh, the other team for the same game jam, so we're kind of like rivals here. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, it's basically like, uh, the concept is basically like a, a horror concept, um, so we basically just have to make like a horror game. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so with that, like, uh, we're gonna... Uh, start learning the dough which is uh, a game um, game engine uh, and uh, we're super excited about that and I want to I want to hear uh, I want to hear the other hosts opinion on this like what uh, how progress how report going, how do you like that progress report you know yeah um I've really enjoyed the game jam so far I can't say I've done much coding in it but um uh, I watched like a hour-long video tutorial on Godot to be honest our game you know this Addy we yeah. haven't done that much code, but we have all of the art for the game done, so um, we're going to grind from here on exactly, out. Exactly, yeah, we're going to yeah. grind it out. Tomorrow, today, is just going to be the grind. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Later mm-hmm. tonight, I'm watching so many tutorials on GD Script. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited, though. I really like the idea of the game. I really like how it looks. Um, I've never done any sort of pixel art before, uh, so I feel like when I was looking at the individual sprites that I was making for things in the game, uh, I was like, how is this going to fit at all? But now that everything is like together and I copy pasted it all onto like one page and try to like lay it out on like the, on Aspirate, which is a pixel art editor, it looks like it, it looks pretty good, especially for like an amateur drawing, you know? For sure. Yeah. And like, um, I, I, I saw like all the, the drawings that, that, uh, all the sprites that max made and you know i'm, I'm pretty impressed because i was like damn these look like very very realistic i mean realistic in the sense of a game right like yeah they, they look like it's they're they're made by like a uh, an indie game company that is about to launch their game on steam you know so <laughs> i think that's yeah. something that i didn't realize right when i was making the art is like something that i was thinking of a lot while i was making the art for the game i was like thinking of games like stardew valley that has like amazing pixel art or like terraria that has very very good pixel art right um and i I was thinking about it and i was like like uh this looks so lame in comparison to that but when you scrap like browse your indie games on steam i feel like a lot of people they don't try super hard to make their pixel art perfect they just try to like view it through like a creative lens which is what i tried to do my best i tried to like think of hey i've played a lot of indie games with pixel art um what are some ideas or cool things that i saw that i can kind of project with my uh ideas of what i want this game to be uh or look like and i I don't know i think it only turned out uh good because like i think honestly i still think it looks like really amateur uh but i i I think like that is like kind of a certain charm it adds a certain charm to the game you know for sure, yeah, and it, it adds that like kind of uh, effect of like yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it's made in ten days sort of effect. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we grinded yeah. it out. I'm um, surprised you guys got all of your like um, art done though, because my art guy, so like uh, uh, my friend Ben, we are we did like a like a game jam together once before, and this time we've really been struggling to like meet like our art deadline, so we kind of just got like um, some some of them on like itch. Right, and then 
he's still making the characters and the animations, which he's phenomenal at. But yeah, I'm really, I'm really surprised that you guys. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you seen the art for our game though, Veronica? Uh, yeah, you showed me the the Mr. Turnip Head. Yes, the German <laughs> head. <laughs> uh, we made a uh, uh, so it's a horror game. There's a scarecrow in our game, and uh, I was like, "Oh, what's a scarecrow?" And then uh, Howl's Moving Castle, which is an animated movie, has uh, a scarecrow character with like a turnip head. I don't really know the name of the actual name of the character, but. Veronica calls it Turnip Head. It's his, no, his name is Mr. Turnip Head. This really? This deserve the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually his name? Yes. Yeah, okay. He wears like a top hat and a suit, and I was like, I can make the scarecrow and put a top hat on it, and it'll look like Turnip Head. And it actually does. It actually does. Yeah. It worked out yeah. better than I thought it would when I was drawing it. So, like, what phase are you guys in? Like, how much, do you, how much more do you need to get done? We're probably about um a third done yeah we just we have to get the coding started and working on that um and yeah. uh and actually learning the language that we're working with so <laughs> yeah um but other than that i think we've made pretty good progress like we we have the objectives down we have like all the whole game kind of progression down too yeah um, especially with uh like i've watched about um two hours of good tutorials um mm -hmm. I definitely think that there's enough time to get it done with my basic knowledge of coding 2D Gudo. Yeah, I was looking. I was looking through the documentation. It doesn't seem too bad. Like I was, I was like, oh, like that's yeah. the, what this is about, and you know. There's it's, just it's, a lot of like easy. looking up how to do certain things. Exactly, but that's like any any programming language. Yeah, yeah. Honest, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about how about you, Veronica? I want to hear from you. The opposing uh, team. How's yeah. That, how, how's it going? Um, well, for me, I'm the lead designer, so I came with, like, the narrative. I am in charge of drawing, like, UI designs for, like, the infra screen, like, each room, and I had to, like, make the characters and, like, the descriptions and all that. Um, for me, I don't think it's been, like, too horrible. Like, I've been, like, something about, like, the, the, like, the designer, a really important thing, especially during game jams, is really understanding uh, where your programmers are at and like how much progress we've been doing because uh, you know sometimes we have to opt out for something so that's uh, <laughs> uh, something that I've been really careful about but so far we have one prototype of a room that's been uh, going pretty smoothly um, we can kind of play it we're still working on the inventory system but um, something that's kind of been in our hair is like our isometric rooms where like the the pathfinding's been a little wacky, but other than that, I think we're actually on a good track. And for me, it hasn't been too stressful because um, I actually really enjoy designing and stuff, right? So sometimes, like last night, I was up till like 5 a.m. because I was just in like some flow state. I was just like, yeah, I got this. So I think that's really fun and like having to communicate with all the members. I actually personally scouted each and every one of them and I love all of them like I don't know I'm never I, it's like last time when I was in a game jam it was a bunch of random people and as much as I love that I did like get to meet some really awesome people like this time I got I, I knew them more ish right so that was a little more fun <laughs> yeah so I was gonna touch on that a bit um uh of the three of us um pretty sure that you're the only one with game jam experience do you think that you uh are gonna have a huge advantage because of that um well <laughs> i i feel like when you have experience at a game jam like the especially one that's like online um it is easier because i knew exactly what to set up in our discord and like um uh, Forrest, our, like, project manager, like, it, it was just easy to communicate with him, and he knew what to do, like, he was also experienced, so I feel like we just started off, like, really, really good, bouncing on our feet, and I think that's, like, maybe the only advantage, like, I don't know, I feel like uh, a bunch of, like, our programmers, they're all, like, beginners anyway, so everyone's just learning, and, um, something that I like to talk about for game jams, it's, like, 
it's fun if you know everyone is experienced but it's also like a really great opportunity to actually start learning like game engine and like actually creating something from scratch um so we actually wanted like more people that didn't have that much experience because this is like the perfect opportunity <laughs> and yeah <laughs> for sure yeah, yeah. and we were, we were actually talking about that too like um uh uh, like when Max and I were deciding to do the game jam, we were like, "Oh, like we can work on this outside of the game jam too, right? Because it's like we 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 can just make a game." But like the game jam kind of gives you a reason to like make it in the first place, to learn it, and to actually have a product done or product. Uh, but yeah, um, have something done, right? Because like you you have to submit something. It's not just oh, I'm doing this for my uh, passion. It's not like you can put it off. It's like no, the game jam's happening now. I have to post it now. Right? Yeah. Kind of just gives you motivation to work on it. Um, the deadline, that's like yeah. Kind of part about it. Yeah, the deadline part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that I was very cautious of going into the game jam uh, was a piece of advice that um, Forrest gave me, the one who was on our podcast last episode. He was like uh, telling me about how um, when I was describing the game that I wanted, he was telling me how like like he was. Um, uh, I had a bunch of ideas for it, but he was like, uh, it's a good thing that you're trying to go simple because it's your first game. Um, so it, I think there's going to, he was like, there's going to be a lot of things that you don't know. So you should try to make it as simple as possible, something along those lines. And mm-hmm. after he told me that, uh, I actually tried to make it even simpler because I realized that maybe I was a little bit in over my head. Um, and uh, I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure um, uh, it is the... Like I, I'm pretty sure it's it, it's simple enough to get done at this point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's like I, I, I think like uh, kind of making it simpler than this would kind of be like uh, next to nothing. <laughs> I, well, I don't want to say like next to nothing, but like um, uh, I would say that it's it's simple enough to work with work for beginners as well yeah um, and especially like with with um everything going on with school and stuff too like we don't always have the time to kind of uh like we were talking about before we i didn't get to learn godot until now even though we're, we're like a few days into the the the, the game jam and like it's gonna be uh, due soon yeah um i like i still think that it's doable because we kind of simplified it enough that we know we didn't just like go above and beyond like oh yeah we have to add this we'll add that we'll add this too it's like no we know how much we can get done this is how much we're playing. yeah there are very yeah. few like interactions in our game so like I, there's not like I, it's like um i think the coding aspect of it is a bit repetitive like we have interact with this interact with that right we're just gonna have to be doing the same thing over and over we won't have to learn that many new things i don't think yeah no i think that's amazing that you guys simplified your game because um something that i i never want to see people do is like just totally stop like with school and like prioritizing the game because you know like i feel like that goes into some sort of like toxic mentality where you're um kind of like every single day is an all-nighter and i'm gonna work on this game no it's like more of like a friendly environment we meet up like at 5 p.m every single day some days might be shorter like 30 minute meetings and then some other days could be like an hour like it really depends right and like something that i found was really amazing if you're ever in another game jam and it's like a bit kind of like a bigger group because i think we have like seven people right and uh we do like pure programming so if somebody's working right there's like a uh, you, you 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 have like a little ping saying hey guys i'm working from like one to three if you guys want to join then like you know come come here <laughs> and I, I think that's like really helpful um just to keep each other on track and like communicating with like whatever parts of the game that you're working on and it also like encourages like kind of more positive working like if you're stuck there's at least one other person that you can talk to while you're actively working on like the project (laughs) yeah the thing is as well with that is i feel like there's not a very big experience imbalance so you're kind of like figuring it out together because i assume that everyone is fairly new to godot on your team um Mm -hmm. so like if there's a problem you both kind of figure it out together you know yeah Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like you're getting constantly lectured. <laughs> yeah, um, that, yeah, that's 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 a good thing about pure programming too. Um, and you brought up a good point with that because uh, 
like I guess just in general, not just with programming, uh, working in teams is always better than just not always, but is uh, better when you don't have any experience um, with something. Because it's like I teach you what I know and you teach me what you know. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to sit here and learn from you for 10 hours and then try to implement that afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, 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 yeah, that's, that's a good point that you brought up with the uh, fair programming. Um, so I guess that's uh, that kind of sums up like what uh, what's going on in terms of the game jams in our life right now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what what happened? What? <laughs> Sorry. No, were you gonna say something? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna say like if if you're starting like I don't know like just programming or like just the art or like music, right? Um, something that I found really helpful that I really like personally like uh, is that we have like a channel where we post like updates. Like if we finish. Uh, like the platforming or like the character movement like we would post on the chat and I think that was just like really awesome to see like we're actually making progress and if we got one room done how like it's gonna be much easier to create the second room because we already got like everything kind of so solidified ish right so yeah I, I just think updates are really important like people see like oh we're, we're moving along yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's like that, that really ha I'm like um resources like slack and discord um like we're using discord but like uh th they really help because like you can kind of like organize uh, in terms of channels too so it's like you know what each discussion is talking about so if we're talking about art it's going to be in the arts channel if we're talking about the story it's going to be in the story channel if you're talking about like i don't know background noises or whatever that's going to be in a separate like separate channel so like that really helps with that too yeah um and yeah so regular communication is also key and that's kind of like another good point uh of pair programming um but yeah so that pretty much sums up uh, our uh i don't want to i don't want to like uh, wrap this up again uh, without asking does anyone have anything else to bring up in terms of game jam no i'm pretty sure that covers it mostly yeah so yeah so that pretty much covers uh what's going on in our lives uh with uh game jam and uh, school i guess um and uh yeah so next thing that i kind of um that I wanted to bring up. Uh, well, first of all, uh, just talking like we were saying earlier, uh, since we didn't really have time to learn Kudo either, um, I don't think m like uh, we're, we haven't been making much progress in terms of the monthly uh, new technology uh, goal that we had set. Um, like learning a new technology every month and kind of yeah. like upgrades on that. So like Max this this uh, month was uh, going to learn HTML, but because of how tedious school is right now and um, kind of going making a call back to our uh time management episode um even even with like time management techniques like it's still pretty busy so it's like it's kind of hard to uh learn a new technology while also just uh doing a bunch of other things yeah um, my sort of so mentality with like skipping out on work on html css and javascript was sort of like mostly because of the game gym um yeah. i had a lot of school work to do uh and when the idea of doing a game jam popped up i was like okay um when i'm having my free time i have two options work on the game jam or work on html css right and yeah because there's other people involved with the game jam i don't want to like let them down you know so that makes sense yeah, yeah exactly there's a lot more pressure to work on that over trying to learn html css uh For sure. not to say that i don't have time to do it because i mean sometimes i just need to play video games and chill out but uh, usually when I'm working, it's either on schoolwork or the game jam. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like it's it's um, once you kind of get into uh, learning HTML, CSS, like it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. So it's like it's not something that you have to, um, I guess, stress over for learning about. Like um, you can still like you can still pretty like catch up pretty quickly with it. So wouldn't be too worried yeah you know, like, like you especially because the summer is coming up yeah there's gonna be so much exactly, i'm gonna have yeah. so much free time soon yeah exactly and and yeah and like you said the game jam is like it's much more fun to work on that because it's like you're, you're working with other people and you're you're learning a new technology that you know you can kind of show off like hey look i made this i made this game right yeah um but yeah uh yeah that's that's kind of uh the the weekly progress report on that um yeah, so 
that you can you can kind of see that we were kind of running on no dialogue right now and it, <laughs> it, it, it worked well it worked well for a while but uh um i think i mean well kind of how was your week like what have you been doing in school because yeah, so... uh, the game jam has been really uh difficult to manage because everyone in the game jam is doing uh second year courses except for me but everyone in the game jam is doing second year courses so it's very hard to kind of pick a time where everyone can be there because there's so much work for everyone to do yeah um so uh I, currently i'm working on uh like I'm, I'm learning c uh like with one of my courses and i'm working on an assignment for that and that's been pretty tedious and apparently it's like the hardest uh, assignment of the course so that's fun <laughs> um and like we're, we're learning about like uh threads and stuff like con concurrent programming so that in itself like the concept is pretty like whoa very big <laughs> it's a very big concept so um like learning that and using that so that's kind of what i've been focusing on for the week uh which is why i haven't been able to spend time with the game jam and stuff and i'm also part of this um uh, th there's this, like a club um, with Compton University um, that's like we we kind of work on making uh, software for uh, not for profits and stuff. I'm kind of like bringing tech to them, and so I've kind of been like working on like tasks with that too. Mm -hmm. uh, and so oh, that kind of I quit that one. <laughs> do you do you want to talk about it or? <laughs> oh, of course I would love to talk about it. Right. So, Wait, which is is this um, Blueprint? This is Blueprint, yeah. Yeah, yeah blueprint. so I was part of it for, like, I don't know, in the beginning of January to, like, now. And first of all, like, the meetings are a little too long for me, and it was really difficult for me to focus and everything. And then they were in, like, the middle of, like, a project. And I am less – I thought it was going to be, like, a more, like, mentorship learning experience, but it was more like, here, this is the sprint board. Take what you do and then show what you did. And then sometimes when I didn't do anything, I would still be required to go to the meetings. So I just didn't really feel like I fit in. And um, they were all really nice people, though. Like, everyone had a really nice work work ethic. And, like, uh, talking to, like, people when uh, they are noticing that I wasn't going to, like, the meetings and whatnot, right? Like, um, I think that was pretty, pretty all right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I, I just... I really like the people, but I just don't think I was up to the job. So uh, if I were to ever go into like design and want to come back, like they're very open about it. They're like, yeah, sure, come back, like apply next time if you know uh, you, you want like a different job or whatever, right? So I just quit that because they also had like meetings on Wednesdays, which weren't that convenient for me. Mm -hmm. And you know, everyone should go to the meeting, so I do really feel bad about that. But yeah, I just. I, I quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like, it, it, it's, it's um, I guess you, you can say it's, like, not for everyone, um, and, like, uh, we don't mean this, like, in a bad way, because, like, Blueprint is awesome. Like, I, <laughs> I, I really, uh, it, I really like being part of it, um, but, yeah, like, it's, it's definitely not for everyone. Like, there is, uh, um, like, like you were mentioning, like, the, the, the meetings are, like, I, I personally feel that, too. Like, they can get long sometimes, because, like, there's always, like, clarification needed for a lot of the, the features that we're working on um and so uh, i guess i guess it makes sense that you kind of like i i i, I kind of know like how, how you are as a person so it makes sense that you're not kind of able to focus in those meetings <laughs> just because uh mm -hmm. like i know how you are so i kind of your personality and stuff um and so like i can see like why those meetings don't work for you um but yeah so that's but but kind of yeah coming back to what was going on uh while we're working on the game jam uh just so Blueprint was something that I was kind of focusing on, and uh, my assignment in C. Uh, how about how about you, Max? Uh, what what have you been? How, how's uh, how's things? How are things going? Oh, <laughs> uh, um, I I don't have that much work right now, which is why uh, I'm planning on working on the game jam a lot tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but I just finished uh, not a very lengthy assignment, but a very strange assignment. Um, it I'm not sure what we were supposed to be doing for it exactly uh because the way that i did it is definitely not how i was supposed to do it that's all i'm gonna say um it was like uh you had to um initialize like like a bunch of cards uh like it was like it was in java an object oriented thing um 
and basically I just like hard coded every single possibility um, because I was lazy and I just wanted to watch Netflix while doing it and I didn't want to have to think uh, and it ended up being like 600 lines um, so I'm sorry to the TA that has to mark that but it's based on <laughs> <laughs> the marking in that class is based on like if you if it was right or wrong based on their tester files not based on if they think that you did it bad so um uh, that that's interesting and yeah. do you ever go to ta hours uh in 1406 no what uh, no max you've got to do that i figured like I, there are so many what <laughs> i honestly think that 1406 isn't that hard i feel like a lot of the concepts that we're learning in 1406 right now we learned in 1405 yeah kind of, yeah. yeah like abstraction and stuff too yeah and, and uh, uh um time complexity space complexity um uh what else oh like sorting algorithms like i was hearing from a lot of other 1405 students that they didn't learn it last term or 1406 students that they didn't learn it in their section oh. So I think that we kind of lucked out on our 1405. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because it prepared um, us better. I mean, like right now I'm in like a class and I found like the TAs are very useful. Like if you just find like one good TA, right? Like they are going to like make your world, like flip your world upside down. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't like, think I'm it, struggling that bad in the class. So like I'm not, like yeah. I have good grades in it. I don't think I need to go to office hours. Like I understand everything that's happening. Yeah, to, to you, office hours only help when you're actually having, like, what, in my personal opinion, um, they mostly just help when you're having, like, trouble understanding some of the concepts. Like, if you're, if you're doing well, like, I, yeah, because then, then like, I like, don't, I don't really have ask. anything to ask. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to show up there and yeah. be like, hey, I don't agree with you. <laughs> What's up? I do not agree. I do not agree with you. Because you have to realize that these guys are also, like, older than you. And sometimes if you go in there just to hop by and they're not doing anything, you actually get to talk to them as real people. <laughs> and, um, you guys can talk about the game too like casually and you actually make like i don't know it's, it's like a different interaction it's not it's like you're talking to this person who is here doing nothing else so the most interesting thing is probably talking to you but <laughs> so the thing is, uh I, I don't sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there but the thing is your experience with 1406 was in a class of like 75 people max is taking 1406 with a class of like 200 so Okay. And I've yeah. heard I've heard complaints from some people that they don't actually get to ask their question in office hours. Like there's this one guy that I was talking to, and he said that I've missed three office hours just because I wasn't able to get into, like I was I was like too late in line, and like their office hours finished before I even I was even able to like get in. So like just imagine like having a lineup of a bunch of people and then you just showing up being like, hey, I just want to talk. And yeah. The TA's just like you're uh, taking away from other people. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I have to like I have to like help out like twenty people in line right now. Yeah. Um <laughs> I, I also feel like in uh our fourteen oh five, fourteen oh six, like the last term, um like I feel like people got to know the TAs a lot better because of the TA projects and um how small the class was. So I feel like it was a different story. But I know that you, you probably talked to TAs in your classes now as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Addy. <laughs> Veronica. Oh, well, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, no, I have this one class, uh, 1805, and it's like a huge class, and there are like a bunch of TAs, and I just, you know, pick and choose whoever I want to go talk to, sometimes like the actual professor, and I've had some interesting conversations, and um, I think they are pretty helpful, and just if you didn't, or if you wanted like a different perspective from even like a lecture, they were more than happy to do that if you find the right TAs that is <laughs> mm. uh, yeah yeah um to think back to the assignment I actually didn't even get to the annoying part of the assignment the, the hard coding wasn't that difficult I just had to do a bunch of if statements and change a bunch of letters I was watching Netflix in the background the whole time but <laughs> oh my goodness the second what are your half new Netflix shows I just have to know. Oh, oh, I, I've been uh, watching House of Cards in the background. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Wait, how, how was that? How was that? Um, the first season was really good, but now it's just, like, really weird. I mean, like, honestly, stuff will just happen. I'm just like, why is this happening? Like, isn't, like, aren't they, like, the president of the United States? Like, what's going on right now? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um... Uh, the second half of the assignment, which I was talking about before we came to do the episode, um, and, 
it's like kind of like a they have a bunch of pseudocode and they give you these cases and then you have to line by line test the pseudocode you could always write out the code but it would probably take longer to write out the code um, than it would to just go line by line and it's just really tedious and annoying and then if you lose track of what's happening you have to go and restart and i just didn't like it at all yeah that's my that's my <laughs> complaint with this assignment this the assignment right now is probably the easiest one of the terms so far though so Thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. It, that that's 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 kind of what I also don't like about like, especially when you don't know uh, a lot about like programming. Like when you're just kind of getting introduced to it, it's like a lot of the the assignments are like, oh, put this if, put this else, put a bunch of ifs, put a bunch of else's. And it's like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. I get. I, okay. <laughs> um. But yeah, so getting back to what Veronica was asking earlier, uh, I actually want to ask Veronica what her favorite Netflix effect is, because <gasps> she, she changes a lot, so... Wait, what her favorite what is? Netflix show? Her, her, her current Netflix show. Oh. Okay, I am telling you this right now for anyone who's watching, the best anime I have ever watched is Hunter x Hunter. Oh like, my god, I, oh. I agree with you. I agree with you so heavily. Yeah. I've seen Hunter x Hunter like over a hundred times. Oh my I god. I'm the only one that disagrees. Uh, no, Addy. <laughs> have you seen it? Have you Addy? watched it? I've, I've seen the first half and I was not really impressed. Wait, the first half no. of what? The first half of the first season or the first half of the show? First half of the, the new, the, the newer first season. Uh, yeah, so the 2011. Oh, you yeah. have to get past that. You have to get past it. What season are you on, Veronica? I, I, I have to wait for Netflix. I am on season four. There's five and six left. No, and Netflix is not any... releasing them. <laughs> you have wait, to go, what? you have to go watch them on, like, Crunchyroll. No, so I have to pay. Oh, okay, I'm gonna do that in the summer. The yeah, show, I, the I, show I gets so funny. dark. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. I, no. <laughs> okay, but, okay, at least from seasons one to four, I always ripped on the show because I, I thought I didn't like the art style, right? But it is the, like, the main character is the most likable, likable character I have ever seen, like, in, like, stuff before. It was, yeah. It's an amazingly written Who story. recommended it to you? <laughs> um, my friend. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right all right okay i won't i won't ask anymore <laughs> i'll take it i'll take okay, it okay. yeah um so you're at the part where they're like in the game i i just finished that part yeah. i don't want to spoil anything for anyone because this little dude is a genius and like the thing that i love about this is that sometimes he recognizes the difference in skills but he still finds a way to get through that like a like a like a Oh, he's so good. Yeah, I'm, all I'm saying is season five, six are is by far like worlds better than every single season before it. Like no. if you if you combine them together, Hunter x Hunter has like the most critically acclaimed like anime episode of all time. There's like one episode in the show in like the sixth season that is just phenomenal. Like I've never seen anything like it. No. Okay. Nice. <laughs> I agree with Veronica 100%. That used to be my favorite TV show. It probably still is. <laughs> I guess I'll have to get back into it then. Yes. I'll have to check it out again. Well, I don't know. I, I saw like the first half and I was like, oh, this is like, going too slow for me. Season not one is slow. like the worst oh, season. Not slow. Not slow. Um, it's just, it wasn't keeping my interest. Yeah, season one is like the worst season because they're like kind of like weak in that season, especially the main character. Like they're, sh mm -hmm. like, they're strong, but like they're not like uh, strong enough, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. They start like going through like really cool scenarios, and then it gets kind of interesting because you want to see what's gonna happen. Well, in the first season, you kind of know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Wait, hold on, Addy. Then if you don't think Hunter x Hunter is the most amazing show in the whole entire world, what is your most amazing or toilet topper show? Uh, my most amazing, my favorite show, I think, is uh, The Last Airbender. Really? I, I like it's. It, I think that's the show that's hard to beat. To be honest. It's so, I think, like, I like it purely for, like, the nostalgia at this point. Because I've seen it so many times that I just can't watch it anymore. But the thing is, the reason you've seen it multiple times is because it's an amazing show. That right? is true. Exactly. So, that is true. Like, I, I, I feel like it's very unique. Like, it's a show that's, like, it has the elements of anime, but it's not an anime. 
and he has like oh. yeah, it's and a it's cartoon. Just like very, like it's very deeply connected. So it's like a if you watch it as kids, damn, this is a good show. If you watch it like when you grow up as an adult, damn, this is a good show. But then you start understanding a lot of the layers that the show actually has, and you're like, whoa, this is an amazing show. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You know, like there's so many things that you just like you don't like. I, I've I've like read like a bunch of like facts about the show and I'm just like I've never even like thought about it that far and that's actually crazy that the creators actually went that far and like kind of made this point just so that it relates to another point, you know? Yeah, with Last Airbender, spoiler warning, um the whole like Iroh thing was like my like the whole like like that arc where like we saw like Iroh like his backstory and like oh, yeah. why he quit being general. That was also mm-hmm. like like heart wrenching. I was like, damn. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he was like the that. he was like the good he one. He was the yeah. good one. Yeah, I know. And like when he sings, oh my god. Yeah, that I think I was like when I was younger. I think I cried when I watched that. Little yeah, baby like me. I I don't know. Like I, I it made me feel like so like like weird. I was like, oh my god. Like it's this is this is like this is heartbreaking. You know? Yeah. And it's also it's also really sad because I was like, and I, 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 it I, makes I'm you like sure respect was... how he views Zuko. You know. Exactly, and it's it's also sad because I I think that was also the last episode that uh, the original voice actor had. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that makes it even more sad because the guy exactly. died. Yeah, because yeah, he passed away right after, so it was like it was really sad. I was like, wow, like mm. they actually and and it's it's because like even like when the that that like after he's like he he sang the song like it literally the screen just says like in memory of like the voice actor. I'm like, whoa, mm. this is yeah. But yeah, th- I think that's that's probably my uh, favorite show. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good show. Both shows that both of you mentioned were very pog. Very pog. Yeah. <laughs> House of Cards, I don't like it that much. So if I was to say like a, a good show that I like on Netflix, um, I have no clue. <laughs> uh, it'd probably be an anime, but uh, Veronica kind of took it. I would have said Hunter x Hunter probably. Cool, cool, cool. Um, this is this is kind of on an unrelated note, but I was uh, I was uh, listening to a podcast yesterday, and something that they brought up. I want to ask you guys: uh, Do you guys believe in ghosts? Do I believe in ghosts? Yes. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Like, so like, first of all, no would be like my like the answer that I'd usually give, but like mm-hmm. I haven't like. You know, like, I haven't seen a ghost. I haven't had an experience with a ghost. Ghosts could exist. I have no way of knowing that they exist or not, you know? So, like, mm-hmm. I my no is, like, a very, like, I guess, like, a indecisive no. I guess you can be, say, like, you're kind of agnostic to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. That is a little different for me. <laughs> I've only had, like, one spooky encounter in my house where me and my two friends had like a sleepover in my basement and it was like 3 a.m right and then we went upstairs to you know go get some popcorn to microwave some popcorn right and then on the way upstairs you know i went up to go grab my toothbrush and i realized like there was like some whispering talking ish going on and my everyone in the house was like asleep on like the top floor so i'm like that is so weird. So I went to go get my toothbrush and I come downstairs. I didn't think anything of it, right? But then all the way down to like the basement with like every like the other two girls, I was like, "You guys heard that whispering, right?" And then another girl said, "No." <laughs> She's like, "I also heard that whispering. Oh was it God. not from upstairs?" I'm like, "No, there's no one talking upstairs." And then one of the girls couldn't hear anything. They're like, no, I didn't hear anything, right? So then when we went to bed, right, I obviously went to sleep first because, you know, I sleep like a dummy. Were you not but... scared to sleep? I would be terrified to fall yeah. asleep. Oh, no, I was, no, no, I didn't think anything of it, right? But uh, I went to go to bed, and then another friend of mine went to go to bed, but then Jess was the only one who stayed up till like, really late, right? And then when she woke up, she was like, hey, guys, did you wake up in the middle of the night, like, laughing and running around? And I'm like, what? no, I did oh, not. No. <laughs> so then, uh, she was like, wait, I swear, I was like, I was like half asleep where I d- could, I wasn't opening my eyes, but like I was closing my eyes or whatever, right? And I just heard you guys like running around and like laughing. I'm like, oh no, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> was this at your house? 
Yeah, that's what that in my head. Oh, no, that makes it worse. But Yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> thing is, though, is, like, when I think of stuff like that, right, it's, like, sleep paralysis is a thing. Like, I've had, like, like really, really scary stuff happen to me, like, with, like, waking nightmares, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, seeing, like, demons and stuff in, like, the corner of my room. Because uh, I get sleep paralysis uh, quite often. So, I mean, like, that can be, like, easily explained with, like, those types of things, right? Like, she could have just been, like, in, like, a state of sleep paralysis, you know? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. True. Um, but, like, the whispering, I don't know how you explained that. Oh, that yeah. shit was so crazy, man. Like, <laughs> it's also, yeah, like, was... like, uh, like, um, I feel like a lot of ghost stories become a little bit discredited when it, like, involves, like, something happening right after you wake up or, like, before you're going to sleep because your brain is still, like, in REM, in, like, your REM cycles, right? So, like, you're still produce your brain's still producing all like the dream chemicals you know mm-hmm. so exactly. like you can be like seeing crap <laughs> yeah 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 um and and like uh, one 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 thing like that that like the podcast i was listening to yesterday like um one point that they brought up was like every time you see like you hear of a ghost it's always like them scaring you but you've never actually seen like a you've never heard of a ghost like oh i don't know pulling your hair or like beating you up or something right? it's always like they're scaring you um and it's like oh if, if if you have heard of like a ghost like i don't know hurting you it's like it's always like it's mostly like a demon that's like possessed you or something right yeah it's, it's never it's never like oh like i heard a ghost like like laughing or like veronica was saying whispering but it's like i think it, it's also the point where it's like oh, even if they do exist it's like i don't think they can do much to hurt you yeah to like harm you yeah yeah. I don't know. Like, the only other experience I had with ghosts, oh, this one's, like, a little scary, but, you know, I got through it. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night, and then um, under my bed, you can, like, we have, like, this little light outside of my, like, hallway, and you can see, like, if someone's, like, walking underneath your door. So I was, like, I woke up, right, and then I, I saw, like, someone kept dropping a pencil or whatever and then walking back to pick it up and then dropping it and then walking back up what to get the... it. And I, and I was like, okay. So <laughs> Your house is 100% ghosts. haunted, Veronica. Yeah. No, 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 no. They are harmless ghosts, though, so I don't mind. Veronica, Whereas, what's like, behind you? attack me. Huh? I'm joking. I'm, j- I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So... I mean, you, like, what you said before, like, sometimes, like, before we go to bed or, like, if we're kind of, like, in, like, a, like, a groggy state, it might not always be true, but it felt really real, and I, like, could open my eyes and move and stuff, but, like, it didn't attack me, so I think that's okay. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that's, yeah, that comes back to the point that I was, like, saying, right? It's, like, they don't really harm you. Yeah. It's kind of the thing. I mean, I I have a, a, my old, like, the house that I, I've never had a personal ghost experience, but it was a wide consensus among the people who went into the first house that I lived in when I was very young that it was haunted um, Mm -hmm. because of weird stuff that happened in the basement. So, like, my aunt would tell me that she went down there once and the lights were off and she saw, like, lights floating in the room and uh, the housekeeper that come by once a week to clean up, um, Mm -hmm. she wouldn't go into the basement because she'd been down there before and she thought it was haunted um yeah uh, like I, I think basements are a common a common theme with ghosts um like i um i haven't had like any experiences personally either so like i i i, I think i'm also kind of like agnostic to kind of like they could exist they could not exist i don't know um but like the the one thing that i kind of remember i was also a kid so this could have just been like my imagination going wild but like I could have sworn that I heard like typing noises and like because I, I I have this like old computer in my basement and like um, I heard like typing noises so like I kind of like look down and like I don't see anything but I just see like a, a green light kind of like flashing from the monitor it looked like looked like um, and what's interesting is that uh, my my monitor like my desktop background for that computer is actually just like a green like like a, a flat green like it's just green so i was like wait i know for a fact that's that like so off. scary yeah i'm like i know for a fact that i turned the computer off if i'm coming upstairs and the fact that i kind of heard typing and i look downstairs and i see like the green light kind of oh my god like, that kind of makes my hair stand up a little bit <laughs> like i, I, I it could have like like i said it could have just been like my imagination going wild but like i don't know it was it was really weird I'm like, but the monitor I, I like was I, on for sure 
I don't know, because I, I was too scared to go downstairs. To oh, check, yeah. Right? Yeah, I would, I would, I would like, not go down there. Exactly. I just saw, like, a, a light kind of, like, flashing on the, the, the chair. So I'm like, hmm. Like, I, I, hmm, that's kind of suspicious. But maybe that's why we don't believe in ghosts, because we wouldn't go down there, you know? To see it, yeah, because yeah. we're too, too afraid. Too afraid. And I, I think, like, the, the, the big, at, at least for me, the big factor with, uh, like, uh, about fear with ghosts is... I can't see I can't see them so like I don't know what they're doing I can't see what they're doing right if they do exist and I also like can't really um like what do you do if if you if you have a ghost in your house like you can't I don't know there's not much what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah. would you ever it. use an Ouija board I, would I have it. used them before no tell no, us no. your experience with that I want to hear um the the thing that i realized was uh so I, we do it at camp right we do it with a piece of paper or and then uh, a few years one of the counselors brought a real one um the thing that i would notice is when everyone's hands are on it right uh it usually starts moving because people will like put their weight down like on it and then it'll start moving in a direction and then people will start pushing against it or something or like doing something against it and then when people start getting freaked out because it's moving, they'll take their hands off, and then one person will still have their hand on, and then they'll start moving really fast because they've been putting it in a, like in a pressure in like one direction, right? And that was like super spooky when I was younger, but like you know that it's just like people holding their hands down on it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it moves because of like the pressure that people are putting on it at different angles. Yeah, like there's a scientific explanation behind it, basically. Yeah. I mean, I've I've never had it like I mean, pe I'm sh people like would move it like obviously right like you could see them moving it but like I've never had it like 100% move on its own because I never did it by myself so exactly. yeah we definitely yeah. didn't follow proper Ouija board rules we would take our hands <laughs> off without ending the ceremony or whatever nice um, yeah uh. Well, I think we've reached our, our uh, 40, 45, 46 minute mark uh, mm -hmm. that we usually aim for. So I think it's a good time to start wrapping up. Um, uh, actually, and for those of you who made it this far, like in, in, in the comments, if you're on YouTube, um, just like let us know if you've had any spook spooky ghost experience. I, I, I kind of want to hear from you guys, you know. Um, we want, we want to see it. Yeah, our ghost real. <laughs> our ghost real. We want to we want to <laughs> we want to debunk it. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, and apart from that, thank you for listening. Uh, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe. You know, all the YouTuber stuff. <laughs> um, and uh, thank, thank you for thank you if you made it this far. And even if you just listen to the first five minutes, thank you. Um, thank you to live listeners. Uh, yeah. All right. Amazing. <laughs> all right. <laughs>